you know what? Mike Jones made the tackle and the Rams won the Super Bowl. Live from the Ram Cave, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is Ram View, the April 15th, 2024 edition, brought to you by Kistler Law Firm. Injured in an auto accident, need help? Got questions? Call Kistler Law at 661 206 6990. That's Kistler Law at 661 206 6990. And Check out KistlerLawFirm.com. Kistler Law, we've been fighting for you since 92. And of course, my Temple City Auto Repair. Having some auto issues, get yourself some John and Henry at TempleCityAutoRepair.com. And of course, by Granite Ridge Christian Camp, a place where your life can change. Okay, it is kind of, it's Jackie Robinson Day. We're going to talk about that, but it's also kind of Mike Jones Day and, uh, we're going to talk about Mike Jones. We're going to talk about Dan Reeves. We're going to talk about Rick Saw. We're going to talk about the draft, of course, because it's the draft, the draft, and more draft right now. Uh, and uh, and then we'll go around the NFL and some other places. Okay, so um, ESPN draft guys, Mel Kuyper, who's been doing it for a thousand years, and uh, his new uh, running mate over there uh, uh, at what what Dan Patrick calls the mothership is a guy named Field Yates. They're not bad. I, I don't have any problem with with them, uh, but they're projected. They agreed on a projection that had the Rams um, dealing pick number fifty two and pick number eighty three. That's their second and third round pick uh, in uh, in in this year's draft to move up with the Panthers uh, to go to number thirty three, which the Panthers own right now to take Michael Penix. And uh, I thought it was interesting because. I heard some stuff over the weekend, not related to Penix, but uh, we had had a conversation on Friday and I was going back and forth, I think, with Tim Burns uh, about um, about whether or not, hey, if Penix was there at 19, would you draft him? And I'm, I was thinking about it all weekend, right? If for some weird reason uh, Penix was there at 52, of course I think I'd take him. You have to take him if he's there. But, uh, but the other aspect was I kept weighing was, Rams aren't going to be in this draft position again, you know, where there's this draft goes six quarterbacks deep, right? I mean, we know there's hits and miss. Remember, Dan Marino was the sixth quarterback taken in 83. And, uh, and uh, he, you know, he was the last one taken. Uh, you know, Todd Blackledge, Ken O'Brien, Tony Eason. Yeah, we know how that worked, right? So I try to weigh the idea, if he's there, you got to take him. But then I just started thinking about the Rams Super Bowl window. This team is committed to Stafford. Stafford gave no, you know, if, you, if you could just get rid of 2022, you would think, you know what? We don't have any problems with our quarterback looking old, right? And the team seems committed to a three-year, if not three, definitely a two-year Super Bowl window. I mean, look at what they did with the interior offensive line. That thing looks like it's been locked up for at least three years to make sure no defenders step into Stafford's face, right? And so it appears they're all in on Stafford. And they'll deal with whatever needs to happen at quarterback in a couple of years. So I've kind of come off the Michael Penix thought. Not that my thoughts were affecting the less Snead draft room, but uh, when the list of first-round attendees in Detroit was released on Friday, uh, Bo Nix and Michael Penix weren't on there. And there was a lot of talk about that. And there was talk over the weekend, I heard on a couple of sites, talking about how the Dolphins and Cowboys were reluctant, you would think they'd be, to uh, extend Tua and Dak, and that those teams could be looking at a quarterback, right? Uh, we've been seeing the Cowboys in every mock draft drafting an offensive lineman because they lost Tyron Smith and everyone's getting old over there. But they could be going for quarterbacks, which, again, that's really interesting. But the thing that got my wheels turning about Penix and Knicks was I like the idea of those guys being in the first round. I like them being in the first 18 picks, right? And the reason I like those guys and J.J. McCarthy being in the first 18 picks means six quarterbacks in the first 18. And that means only 12 other position players would be taken. And so the talent pool would be larger for the Rams at 19, provided they stay at 19, right? Uh, and it pushes back more edge, DT, 
defensive tackle, offensive line, and cornerback talent to the Rams at 19, or even if they were to trade back. And so, so yeah, I, I've, I've come full circle on this uh, over the weekend. And uh, yeah, I want I want Penix and I want uh, Knicks. I want them going in the top 15, man. I want that talent pushed back so Rams can get the best player available. OTAs are beginning in May. Players have started arriving for workouts. It's so funny. When I was younger, you were always hearing about holdouts. Who's holding out? Who's holding out, right? Uh, they make so much more money now, and so much more of it's guaranteed. I mean, none of this stuff used to be guaranteed. And uh, and so you don't you don't hear about the holdout as much anymore, unless you're the 49ers dealing with someone like Brandon Ayuk. But we'll we'll get to that. So trade up or trade back, right? Whatever the case is, I think most of us don't think the Rams will stand still. And I promise you guys, I see the questions kind of starting to pile up a little bit. I promise you, I'll get to them at the break. Uh, so I looked at Les Snead's uh, seven first round draft opportunities he's had. Right. Hasn't had one since 2016. Uh, he had two in 2014. So he's had seven first round picks that he's made. Uh, twice uh, he's traded back. Twice he's traded up. The only three picks he made where they didn't do anything, they just drafted where they were slotted, was unfortunately bad name here. I don't want to lose any audience. I, I got to repeat it during draft season. I promise the fall will be Greg Robinson free. But right now, you have to talk about it, especially while we're in draft season. Greg Robinson, Aaron Donald, and Todd Gurley were the only ones out of the seven picks that the Rams made um, in the first round under Les Snead that they didn't move up or move back to get. 2016 was a trade-up to get Goff. 2013 was a trade-up, believe it or not, to get Tavon Austin. The Rams had picked number 22, but they traded back to number 30 with the Falcons to get Alec Ogletree. I feel like I owe Alec Ogletree a little apology here after Neil Gonzalez came, let me know that I omitted him on uh, Friday's show, and I felt bad about that. Uh it's interesting, uh, the Rams in that in that uh, Ogletree deal where they moved back eight slots with the Falcons. They went from 22 to 30 in 2013. They picked up a third-round pick and a sixth. A sixth we won't worry about. The third-round pick was Stedman Bailey, and we just talked about him the other day. In 2012, the Rams owned the number six overall pick from the Robert Griffin deal, but they dealt that to the Cowboys and moved back to number 14, Cowboys took, uh, was it uh, Morris Claiborne, the corner? Didn't work out. Rams took Michael Brockers at 14. And I, I like Michael Brockers. You know, he was the Mike Fanning of the 21st century. He had a nice run with the Rams, uh, a good, what, nine season, eight se nine season run, 2012 through 2020, right? Nine seasons. I liked him. He wasn't great, but I liked him. And uh, so it's tough to find a pattern here with what Snead has done. It's, that's why it's so fascinating to see uh, what's going to happen. Uh, Ramswire put out a seven-round mock, and uh, and I thought it was interesting. They had the Rams taking Brian Thomas uh, at number 19, uh, Marshawn Nealon, uh, Nealon, the the Western Kentucky guy, at number 52, the Ohio State uh, interior lineman Michael Hall at 83, DJ James, cornerback, uh, Joe Milton, Tennessee quarterback, uh, Walter Rouse, Oklahoma, Dominique Hampton, safety, uh, Washington, Tanner Borderlini, uh, center, Wisconsin. Never go wrong with a Wisconsin guy. I'm still I'm still holding out hope with Logan Bruss. Jalen Ford, who the Rams have interviewed, uh, Texas going to 213. Blake Watson running back at uh running back out of Memphis. I think that was uh Daryl Henderson went to Memphis as well. And then of course the you have to, you cannot do an honest Rams draft. If, if you see a mock draft with the Rams not taking a, a kicker, then, you know, you got to you gotta push that mock draft off to the side. And uh, and uh, Rams Wire has the Rams taking Cam Little out of Arkansas. I, I like the draft because you got a wide receiver, you got an edge, you got a DT, and then you got a corner. Um, I would have preferred a lineman, I think, before a corner in the first 100. And, and basically, if the Rams want to trade back, I'm good. I'm good if they trade back, right? I want more picks in the first 100. And I don't care how it breaks down. Wide receiver, tight end, uh, edge, offensive lineman, offensive lineman, edge, tight end, or, or I'm sorry, DT, uh, or wide receiver. Uh, I don't care how they break it down. I want a wide receiver, a defensive tackle, edge, offensive lineman in the first 100. 
I ran a mock to see what I could get for the 19th pick, and it had the Dolphins offering me number 21 with number 55 overall as a tag along with it. And so I took that deal. Rams could pick at 21 and then get a second round pick at number 55. Take that all day, right? We'll take that all day. Okay, around the NFL and other places, really short here. Brandon Ayuk did the social media canceling like every athlete does nowadays when they want out. Uh, Ayuk scheduled to make 14 rocks in his last season. This is last year under contract. He becomes an unrestricted free agent. He's a really good receiver. He's a great receiver. But, you know, you didn't win a Super Bowl with him, right? Uh, you know, in three postseason games this year, he caught nine passes, one for a, for one for a touchdown, you know. Uh, he only caught three passes in the Super Bowl. And think about that. Brock Purdy brought – Brock Purdy, I'm saying, yeah, Brock Purdy brought the the 49ers back twice and then put them ahead uh, three times. He had key drives there. Brandon Ayuk only caught three passes in that game. So uh, from my perspective, John Lynch, pretty pleased with sugar on it. You know, give the man his blank and money. Please sign him. Put yourself in debt to Brandon Ayuk. Uh, and uh, because the realization is there's a glut of receivers. And Look at Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson's been the best receiver in football the last two years. And what has it gotten the Vikings, right? You need a team around it. It's quarterback dependent. Uh, and there's so much to be in a receiver, uh, blocking, running your routes, doing all those things. And there's a glut of receivers. Did you know, maybe you don't know this, did you know the Rams got a starting receiver that was Pro Bowl level this year? They got him in the fifth round? Yeah. Yeah. So... If I'm a love, uh, 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 if I'm in love with the 49ers, I'm thinking deal, Brandon Ayuk. But please, I'm asking, please, John Lynch, extend Brandon Ayuk. Give him what the Eagles did with their receiver today. Okay, uh, today's Jackie Robinson Day, uh, and uh, that's cool. Everyone gloms on with Jackie Robinson, and rightly so. But uh, there's a couple things about Jackie Robinson. Everyone brings up 42. Joe, did you see 42? Yeah, I liked 42. I thought uh, Chadwick Boseman, that was his name, the late Chadwick. I thought he was great. I thought Harrison Ford was great as Branch Rickey, but I thought it was a, a really missed opportunity with 42. I thought they did such a good job with the players, you know, the way they made them look and interact, and then the scenery and everything. I think they could have done a trilogy with that. They could have called it the Boys of Summer trilogy. They could have had the Jackie Robinson movie 42. Then they could have done Boys of Summer. And followed these characters, all these actors they put together to play the Dodgers of that era and showed them going through all their heartbreak until ultimately the triumph in 55. And then the third movie could have been a post-baseball biopic on Robinson. His move into business, uh, his some of his struggles with the NAACP, his political leanings, and then kind of being dumped on by the radical movements of the late 60s. This guy led an amazing life. And he lived in a lot of pain. You know, there was a lot of pain that Robinson went through after baseball as well. And uh, and he, there could have been a great movie there, a great series of movies there. And I thought they blew it. But happy it's Jackie Robinson Day. Uh, yeah. So who's the better who's the better uh, carrier on of, uh, of Jackie Robinson? Is it truly the Dodgers or should it be the Mets since they still play in New York? Okay. I'm Joe Tarosian, and I was a sports writer for 21 years. Now I do Ram View, thanks to our sponsors at Kistler Law, and I write books. My books are on Amazon. You can check them out there, Joe Tarosian, T-O-R-O-S-I-A-N. And uh, you thank you for your support, those things. And uh, Kistler Law and uh, our books help keep us on the air, and they help me with my day job. I pastor a small church in Burbank, Burbank Faith Nazarene, and uh, it's right here on YouTube, Burbank Faith Virtual. And you can check us out there and across social media at BurbankFaithVirtual.com and all across the places um, in social media. So we do have a couple of questions there, so we'll get to them. Tim Burns, Devonta Smith, the next three years, 75 rocks, same three years for Puka, is about $4 million. Sneed is king. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now, I don't think Devonta Smith's bad, but uh, don't you like Puka better? I like Puka better. Puka didn't have A.J. Brown on the other side. He had kind of a hobbled... Uh, he had kind of a hobbled Cooper Cup all year. Later on, a Demarcus Robinson, uh, Tutu Atwell, but none of those guys were going to put fear in the room. And uh, and uh, so, yeah, I, I think Devonta Smith is good. I like Puka myself too. 
USA expat, good to hear from you. With all these quarterbacks, thank God the days of Lee Steinberg are over. Yeah, there you go. You know, actually, here's the funny thing. I'm friends with Lee Steinberg on Facebook. Every August, he sends me a happy birthday. So I feel I feel a little kinship there with Lee Steinberg. Uh, let's see, Willie Bowen. I pray that Latu would be at 15, 19 for the LA Rams. Do you, do you think, I'll throw this out there, Willie Bowen, do you think there's a possibility that Latu could go further back in the draft and that the Rams could trade back, maybe still get him and pick up uh, another third rounder in, in the first 100? Uh, you know, I, I got a feeling it's it's got to be an edge. And by that time, Dallas Turner and Jared Furst are going to be gone. I don't know if anyone estimates uh, Chop Robinson higher than they do uh, than they do um, uh, Latu. And so, you know, if here's the thing: what you're looking in Latu, are you are you going to get another Lawrence Taylor? No, but could you get a Leonard Floyd? Right? Here's the my Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd wasn't great, but Leonard Floyd was consistent, right? You could count on Leonard Floyd, right? He held the edge. You know, he'll still get you double-digit sacks. He'll get you 10 sacks every year uh, in his prime. And he wasn't spectacular. He was, you know, he was not that spectacular. That's why they brought in Vaughn Miller. But, uh, but yeah, he was a nice edge player. And if you get somebody just to lock it down, just to lock it down and maybe give it an opportunity for Byron Young to develop more, that would be really interesting. Tim Burns, how does the NFC West play out? I am no homer, but I have the Rams at 12 and 5, uh, San Francisco at 11 and 6, Seattle 6 and 11, Arizona 5 and 12. Well, Vegas, Vegas projects 11 and a half wins for the 49ers, 10 wins again for the Rams. And, uh, and they actually got Cardinals going ahead of the Seahawks. That's going to be an interesting deal there. Talking Seahawks Cardinals. You know, the Seahawks had that great draft in 2022. They picked up Cross. They picked up Lucas along the offensive line. Uh, Reek Willen, the cornerback. And uh, I remember looking at them. I said, the only thing they're missing is a, is a quarterback, you know, going into last season. And they doubled down with Geno. And it was okay. It's not great. And I think that's what's hurt them is they just didn't – they didn't make the move to get a quarterback to consistently deal the ball to Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, Nig and Jigba. And of course, DK Metcalf. And of course, they have Noah Fant there too. And uh, Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, that's not a bad backfield. And so uh, they just need a quarterback. And I don't know if Sam Harrell, is Ham is that really the guy? Is he the guy that's going to step in? I, I would have thought they would have been really going hard on Michael Penix. Uh, the Cardinals scare me. I've told you guys this. They got six picks in the first 100. They played hard last year. Uh, doesn't look like they whiffed on much. To me, their biggest question mark is Kyler Murray. You know, what do you get out of Kyler Murray? Can you trust Kyler Murray? I don't necessarily like Kyler Murray. I think when the chips are down, so far, when the chips are down, the dude folds. Uh, when was the last time he finished a season? You know, we know he finished it last year, but he wasn't around at the start, right? And so I like their coach, and I think in 2025, the Cardinals could be scary. Frisco, I think, is good. I think they're going to be good, but I think they're ready to fall. If the NFL hadn't bumped that salary cap up another 30 rocks, well, it helped everybody, including the Rams. I think they really would have been a world of hurt. Uh, and, uh, you know, what are they going to do on that offensive line? When does uh, Trent Williams' age catch up with him? And they're going to go with Colton McKivitz on the other side. Uh, they've got some offensive line issues. And uh, come on, Christian McCaffrey has not been hurt since he's been in Frisco. Christian McCaffrey is due – for a pulled hamstring, a bruised knee, or a sore shoulder at some point, right? At some point, he's got to be uh, due for that. And uh, we know Brock Purdy is mortal. We know Brandon Ayuk wants out, and uh, or he wants his bag. And if they give Brandon Ayuk his money, that means other people aren't getting their money. So I think Frisco is a playoff team this year. But even though the Rams lost Aaron Donald, and I think some people have backed off of them, I think Aaron Donald being gone, opens opportunities up for the Rams. Now you'd want Aaron Donald there, but uh, when he gets off the books in another year, it's good. It, it could extend the Super Bowl window. That's what I think. So I think the Rams are in good shape. Um, Manuel Carrillo, what's up? Uh, Willie Bone, Michael Hoyt can take Aaron Donald's place on the defense. You know, yeah, and I know someone's going to come after you for that, uh, Willie, but there's some truth in that in the sense that he can play with his size. He can't play with his hand in the turf. I won't say the dirt, but in the turf. And it is about loading up on guys 
that can play the position. No one's going to play it like Aaron Donald, right? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Swan Johnson gives you this year. Will he develop? Will he go to another level? Kobe Turner, those guys. Uh, Bobby Brown is in a contract year, so you know he's going to be hungry, right? He wants his payday. And so the interesting thing that will be happening here is can the Rams pick up a couple of other interior defenders, you know, late in the first 100, then in the fifth round, some rotational guys just to eat space, just to eat space. If the Rams can get another edge uh, to take some pressure off uh, the interior, that opens Kobe Turner up. It opens up opportunity for Byron Young. And so, yeah, I don't think you have to get an all pro there. You just got to get some dude that can just fill some space and is hungry. And uh, Michael Hoyt, I love Michael Hoyt. You know, we saw it all last year, right? Everyone likes Michael Hoyt. It's not his fault they put him in coverage. Right? It's not his fault he was in coverage. Okay, Manuel Correa, did you see him uh, locked on Rams, mocked my guy Jonah Ellis? Uh, uh, you know what? I did. I did. I heard it. I heard it because I'm driving in my car and I'm scanning for content. And I heard it. And I thought, you know what? Those guys are taking Jonah Ellis' stuff. They're taking Manuel Correa's stuff, man. So, no, I, I thought it was great. I'm proud of you, man. I think it's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes, and I'm not slamming those guys at uh, Locked On, uh, but sometimes their show reads like the like the cue on Rams wire, right? Sometimes, sometimes. And I understand it's a slow period. And you know what? Because it's slow – we're all going to come across and cross pollinate with the same content, but good for you, man. Uh, USA expat uh, at Tim uh, record uh, predictions can easily change after week one and two key injuries to teams. Yeah. And you know, uh, I will say this too, USA expat. Uh, it's an interesting thing because remember last year they projected the Rams with five wins, right? And that was Vegas. And everyone tells you Vegas knows what it's doing. Well, Sometimes Vegas doesn't know what it's doing, right? Sometimes those of us that are closer to the situation, I, I don't know. I never asked you guys, did you think the Rams were only going to win five or six games last year? You know, we were in that uh, eight to nine window. I know I was. And then if everything went right, maybe get to 10 wins. And everything went right, but not the way I said they would. And they still got to 10 wins. So, um, yeah, you just never know. Yeah, and one key injury, man, and it's church. It's all over. Uh, Manuel Correa, uh, Rams brought in Troy Fontenot. Yes, they did. Would you be upset if they were at 19 and they drafted him? I would not be upset. Offensive lineman, wide receiver, uh, defensive, uh, defensive tackle, interior defender, we call them nowadays, or, um, or an edge. Any one of those four in any combination, I'm good with in the first 100. Tim Burns, Brandon Ayuk is going to have an attitude without that bag. Him as a head case will only help the Rams preach. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. And, you know, a, a guy like Ayuk, I, again, I, I I don't know. Maybe it's a case of I got to get my money now because there is going to be a glut. The bubble will burst at some point because there are so many receivers coming into this league and there's a whole nother round of free agents. And I say, you know what? I can get a guy. And the analytics hasn't come out and said it yet, but we figured it out with running backs, haven't we? We figured it out with running backs. We figured it out on defense that you don't spend money in certain places on defense, off-ball linebacker. I'm sorry to Steeler fan Rob in Missouri. You don't give 20 million rocks to your to your, um, uh, to your your safeties. You know, there's just things. And I think there's going to be a bubble burst with wide receivers. I mean, the exceptionals upon exceptional, of course, but you can find these guys. The Rams found a guy in the fifth round. They found another guy that is a uh, borderline Hall of Fame right now depending on how it works out in Cooper cup in the third round number, what 68 or 69 overall. And so, yeah, I, I definitely think it's going to be an issue for the 49ers going forward. Uh, Willie Bowen, the Rams need a running back with fullback weight to complement Kyron Williams. Yeah. We were talking about that. The, you know, I mentioned Braylon Allen, Audric Estime from Notre Dame is a guy that everyone seems to like the Rams have interviewed him, something to keep an eye on. Um, and, uh, yeah, they do need something to go with Kyron Williams. I totally agree. You know what people forget, I wouldn't forget because they're not nerds. Like some of us that have no life, but like me, maybe you guys, I don't know is, uh, in 73 McCutcheon had his breakout year, but do you know who the Rams running back was down around the goal line? It wasn't Jim Bertelson. Colin Bryant was still a defensive back. 
was Tony Touchdown Baker. I think he scored nine touchdowns that year for the Rams. He was the short yardage specialist. Teams used to have guys like that, like Don Nottingham. They're the short yardage specialist, right? There was no brotherly shove in those days. And so, yeah, you need you need some muscle. Paul Kissler. All right. Kissler Law checking in. What if tight end Brock Bowers fell to us? If Brock Bowers falls to the Rams, then you got to draft Brock Bowers. If if uh if uh if if Brock Bowers falls to the Rams at 19, then you got to um you got to sign him and go from there. And you tell uh Davis Allen and Hunter Long, hey, we really enjoyed having you. Uh and uh and then you you pair him up with Colby Parkinson for the rest of the year, for the next year, and then and then <laughs> You know, you tell Tyler Higby, hey, man, would you like to go into the scouting department? Uh, because honestly, think where Tyler Higby got hurt last year. He got hurt in January last year, last season. He got hurt in January. We're only three months removed from that injury. And so uh, where are we going to get Tyler Higby back? You know, November, maybe. So, yeah, I would not be against Brock Bowers and neither would Willie Bowen. The only thing I would be against is trading draft capital to move up to get him. That's the only thing that I wouldn't like about Brock Bowers because um, because we don't necessarily need a Brock Bowers, uh, and I'd much rather see us trade back and accumulate than lessen and go to you know three picks in the first 100 as opposed to uh, – and what's that going to cost? Could that be a pick next year or will that be a pick in this year's draft? And this year's draft is rich. This is a deep draft, and – so uh, Willie Bowen agrees with you. And if he falls to us, I absolutely agree. We should make that move. Okay. Keep asking questions, guys. We'll get back to them before the show's over. We are at the 26 minute mark and uh, curious. I did some homework uh, trying to redeem myself after my Alec Ogletree uh, blow <laughs> blew that one on Friday uh, from 1974 to 1980, the Rams drafted 10 players in the first round. Ten players, Capoletti, Fanning, Hera, France, guy named Kevin McLean. He was the whiff. Bob Brzezinski, Elvis Peacock. I don't consider Peacock a whiff. Uh, uh, George Andrews, Kent Hill, and John Johnson. Also, in that decade, in that decade, they had 13 number ones. And that was without having a number one draft pick in 72 or 73. Um, in 1973, they had three number twos. Bryant, Cullen Bryant, Ron Jaworski, and Jim Youngblood. I mean, one guy leads another team to the Super Bowl. Bryant and Jim Youngblood, seven years later, are still with the team, and they're starters and contributors. Bryant scores a touchdown in Super Bowl fourteen. From 1973 through 1980, the Rams had 14 number two picks. I'm sorry, second round picks. 14. That's how you build your team. That would be a model that would work in salary cap issues today, right? Can you imagine having 14 uh, second round picks in an eight year span? In an eight season span, 14 second round picks. That's how you build your franchise and uh, and work under the salary cap. Unfortunately, that was what, 50 years ago. And uh, in present day, since in the Les Snead era, since 2012, the Rams have had seven number ones. We talked about that and 11 <coughs> second round picks. In uh, uh, what would that be? Twelve seasons? Twelve seasons? Yeah, 2012 through 2023. What is the worst draft ever? I talked about 2007. Uh, well, uh, on this date back in 2000, the Rams had a draft, and uh, it wasn't a very good draft. First pick overall, they took Trung. Well, not the first pick. First uh, first round pick was Trung Candidate, running back. Jacoby Shepard, defensive back. John St. Clair, offensive lineman. And then the next day. <coughs> they traded three picks to move up to number four <coughs> in the fourth round and take a guy named Kaluna Noah. Now, Trung candidate we all know about, right? Uh, played, what, three seasons for the Rams? He had a semi-nice year backing up Falk in 2001, 400 yards. Ran for 600 yards a few years later after the Rams traded him for a fourth-round pick to Washington. Jacoby Shepard started one year, was gone. John Sinclair started one season for the Rams, and Noah never played for the Rams. Again, put that 2000 draft next to the 2007 draft and got to go to some spaces in between before this uh, draft season is over, and you'll see how you destroy a franchise for, for a decade 
with this kind of drafting. Yeah, unbelievable. It's been reported. I saw it on Twitter. Andrew Phillips, cornerback, Kentucky, uh, 12th rated uh, corner by PFF, uh, was interviewed by the Rams. He's six foot 187. They say he's very aggressive. I thought his. I thought his. Uh, he has better speed, but I thought he. Uh, he read a little bit like uh, Darian Kendrick. I thought that was kind of interesting. Again, no problem there. If they draft him. Uh, I still I think I'd rather see a uh, I'd rather see a corner taken maybe in the fourth or fifth round than uh, in the top 100 uh, right now. But we'll take what we can get as Ram fans. Okay. All right. Speaking of on this date in Rams history, this one's kind of interesting. On April 15th, 1971, at the age of 58. He was younger than me. Rams owner Dan Reeves dies. Dan Reeves died. He bought the team in 1941 at the age of 29 uh, in Cleveland. And by the time he, uh, 1945 rolled around, they'd won a title. He moved the Rams to L.A., became the first major sports franchise to come to the coast, preceding the Dodgers by 10 years. Uh, he broke the color line, signing Kenny Washington and Woody Strode before Jackie Robinson in 47 with the Dodgers. Um, he employed a full-time scouting staff, the first one to ever do that, and they made consecutive title appearances, 49, 50, and 51. They won in 51 uh, with uh, Van Brocklin, the uh, Fears Pass uh, at the Coliseum. They beat the Browns. The helmet design, I don't think it was Reeves, but Rams were one of the first teams, if not the first team, to have a helmet design. Uh, you never really realized what Reeves was, and uh, – I didn't. He was just the guy that fought with George Allen, as far as I knew. But you really dive into him, and that's why he's put in the Hall of Fame. They put him in the Hall of Fame in 1967. And here's the interesting thing. He's born in 1912, passes away from Hodgkin's lymphoma, something like that, at the age of 58. The next Ram owner is five years older than him, and it's Carol Rosenblum. And uh, Reeves was a young man when he passed away. But we also know folks in that day and age, the, the drinking and the smoking, was prevalent and it really cut a lot of lives short. Dark day, necessary day in Ram history on this date in 1980, the Rams traded Lawrence McCutcheon to the Broncos. Yeah, but they got a third round pick for McCutcheon who was washed at that point. Uh, but that was hard, you know, everyone loved Sir Lawrence, right? And they traded him to the Broncos and uh, they got a third round pick that they eventually, it was a third round pick in 1982 and they eventually use that to help deal in a deal to acquire tight end Mike Barber from the Houston Oilers. Um, on this date, 1993, Rams traded a fourth round pick to the Chargers for Leo Goaz. Remember Leo Goaz? He started a guard for the Rams for four seasons, 60 games, 56 starts. I remember that. Uh, and then in 1999, on a deal, a deal that really surprised me, the Rams sent on draft day a second round pick, which was 36 overall. And a fifth round pick, 138, to the Colts for, drum roll please, Marshall Falk. Big day in Ram history, right? Big, big day in Ram history. And also, 1969, Mike Jones was born. Mike Jones, University of Missouri, undrafted free agent, signed with the Raiders, spent seven years there. The last two was a starter. Spent four years of his 12-year career with the Rams. And of course... He made the tackle of all tackles, right? And honestly, uh, someone needs to be banging the drum for Mike Jones. Uh, ring of honor, something. Because that tackle, just go back and look at that tackle. One, people are kind of debating, was that a hip drop tackle? But where Kevin Dyson is catching it for the Titans and all of his momentum there, and all you see is Jones just wrap an arm and pull him down, it is one of the great tackles. Maybe it's... The it's the equivalent of Stafford throwing the no look to Cup at the end on the drive in Super Bowl Fifty Six. Uh, that's the equivalent of tackles in Super Bowls. Is Mike Jones tackle? Well, what's another great tackle, impactful tackle, other than Mike Jones in uh, in Super Bowl Thirty Four? Uh, I, I I you know it was a hard moment for me because of course the Rams were in St. Louis and I know we got people in St. Louis that watch us and we just did not like Georgia. But I couldn't shake the Rams. No matter how much I tried to shake the Rams, uh, they were my team. You know, it was like the stepchild wanting the love of a stepdad. And uh, and when he made that tackle, I just I remember I was I was working. I was in church. And my evening service ended, and I raced next door into our lounge and clicked on the big screen. And I saw the the Steve McNair scramble, 
And then, of course, then Jones made the play to win the game. And I just sounded my barbaric yop. It was like, this really happened. The Rams won the Super Bowl. And then it was that it was hard, you know, it was hard because, you know, everyone was so mixed. I, I never abandoned the Rams. I just couldn't. They were just my team. It was ingrained. I still got Dick Enberg over KMPC speaking in my head, even as late as 1999, 2000. And so I was so happy. And then, of course, this is why we can't have nice things. Georgia gets up there and says, this proved we did the right thing by moving. And it was just like, wow. Of course, it was a bad business decision, right? You know, she could have said all Ram fans everywhere, but she was Georgia, right? There we go. I mentioned her name. Sorry, guys. But Mike Jones, you know, I love Al Michaels' call. Mike Jones makes the tackle and the Rams are going to win the Super Bowl. Chills. Chills. Get Mike Jones' as propers. You can't retire his number, I understand. Get him in some kind of ring of honor. Put a statue out there. Do something, Kronk. Uh, call me, Stan, and we'll get this worked out. There we go. Uh, on this date in 2012, on a Saturn note, uh, former Rams center Rick Saw, uh, an eighth round pick, 204, out, uh, uh, 204 overall in 1970 out of Michigan State. He passed away uh, at the age of 64. Saw played 12 years for the Rams, 1970 through 81. He made six Pro Bowls, six consecutive Pro Bowls after replacing Ken Iman at center. Yeah, that, that's pretty good, right? Uh, I, I don't think he went to the Pro Bowl in 75. I think he went to the Pro Bowl in 76 and then 76 through 81. Rick Saul was a heck of a center, and he was part of that great link from Iman to Saul to Doug Smith that lasted for over 25 years that – the Rams and Ram fans were blessed to have that there was such a great offensive line. But Rick Saw, yeah, great Ram, often forgot it. Every time you see a number 61, always think of Rick Saw. All right. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Tomorrow we're not on the air. Jesse Hester, uh, tomorrow Jesse Hester was released by the Rams in 1996 on April 16th. The former Raider Burner joined the Rams in 1995 after six productive seasons with the Colts, kind of salvaged his career. He caught 75 passes in two seasons with the Rams, which is interesting because he was drafted 23rd overall in 1985 out of Florida State by the Raiders, right? Al Davis in love with him. Uh, he spent a couple of seasons with the Raiders and only caught 56 passes. But with the Rams, he caught 75, became a polished receiver. Again, uh, another reason why the Raiders have their struggles, right? There we go. All right. Let's uh, let's check this thing out here. Do we have any other uh, questions here? Um, Willie Bone, the Rams also need a kicker. Everyone's talking Jake Paul, Willie. Everyone wants Jake Paul. Uh, Jake. Uh, Jake. Oh, my gosh. My name. You know, the guy in, in the UFL. My name is my uh, my um, my not Jake Paul. He's the fighter. My name is blanking out on him. But I definitely think the Rams need to draft a kicker. Definitely need to draft a kicker. Uh Let's see here. Um, Manuel Correa. It's going to be Brian Thomas if they're Brock Bowers or Adonai Mitchell, Texas at 19. I do like Brian Thomas. I really do. Out of LSU, Brian Thomas is really good. Uh, and I don't. I hope people aren't going to be mad if the Rams make that deal and they do. They do uh, draft a wide receiver early, uh, and they see a special guy because that's just another weapon. And I don't think they understand how thin the wide receiver room is. Uh, you got guys that are on free agent contracts and you got guys that are getting old and you got another guy in Puka who uh, plays a tough game that could, you know, lead to injury, his kind of play. He's not like a stealer receiver. He likes to block. Anyway, did I say that? Okay. Uh, Willie Bowen, don't leave out tight end Woody Strode and James Harris. Hey, I was a James Harris fan. You know, I, I loved James Harris. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Tim Burns, Oz Hakeem, love him for the moves or hate him for the drops. I loved Oz Hakeem because that guy was lightning fast. It's also interesting that I didn't mention it because we didn't have time. You know, we lost Hakeem after, what was it? Was it 2001? We, we lost Hakeem. I think he went to Detroit in 2002. Uh, the Rams tried to replace him with Terrence Wilkins. Terrence Wilkins was this kick returner slash receiver for the Colts. And they signed him to a free agent contract. Will, or no, they traded a sixth round or a seventh round pick for him. He had returned a couple of punts for touchdowns, a kickoff return for a touchdown with the Colts, came to the Rams, did nothing. He wasn't going to get on the field with Torrey Holt and uh, and uh, Isaac Bruce and uh, and everything. And so he went back to the Colts, played a couple more years and won a Super Bowl and then retired. Uh, but 
Yeah, loved Oz Hakeem. Oz Hakeem, you know, and he ended up having a really nice career. Unfortunately, it ended up in Detroit. And, you know, when you go to Detroit, you might as well go to Siberia at that time. So high on Oz Hakeem. Yeah, loved his speed more than his drops. Uh, Willie Bowen, Aaron Donald's tackle on Joe Burrows in Super Bowl 56. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think because it, was, it wasn't at the end zone, uh, that's probably why the Mike Jones one rings a little more truer for me. But I ain't going to complain. <laughs> I ain't going to complain. I validate your, your choice there, Willie. Uh, Tim Burns. If Cardi isn't the kicker, that's the kicker from Stanford. The Rams, uh, the, when the Rams choose, they are, and the Rams don't choose them, they're crazy. He would solve our kicks for the next decade. Arkansas, dude, that's Cam Little, is not better than Cardi. Only thing I would say about this, man, is you never know with a kicker. You just never know. I like Cardi. I like his consistency, you know, but you just never know. Matt Gay was about ready to get washed out of the league and then finds his stroke with the Rams and becomes the highest paid kicker in NFL history, right? Um, you just never know with these kickers. You just don't know. Brent Maher was kicking really well until he got the yips two seasons ago in Dallas in the postseason <clears throat> and was never right after that. And you just don't know with these kickers. Uh, I'm for drafting one, I'm for drafting two, and I'm for bringing the guy in from the UFL. There you go. Um, let's see here. Manuel Correa. Uh, Ricky Pearsall is Ricky Prohl with speed. I believe you. I believe you. I, I like the report I read on Ricky Pearsall. And if the Rams draft him, <clears throat> you're not going to get a complaint out of me, right? Give uh, give Matthew Stafford a Wes Welker uh, a, a, a Julian Edelman, you know, a Danny Amendola, give him one of those guys that, that works out of the slot. That's just his go-to guy that just drives other teams crazy. That would be good to see all down with the get down on that one. And he was interviewed by the Rams. So just something to keep an eye on. Willie Bowen, what's your opinion on Stetson Bennett? My opinion on the draft when they drafted him was, nah. I thought it was, I didn't want to move up for him. Uh, I think I was leaning Clayton Toon. Uh, and then there was what Hafner, the guy was, is that his name? Hafner, the guy from Fresno state. I didn't want him, but the Rams made that move to draft Stetson Bennett. I didn't like it. <clears throat> and then we saw some of the highlights and then I got to go to, uh, <clears throat> I got to go to the camp and see Bennett throw. And he made some really nice throws to Tyler Johnson and Demarcus Russ, Demarcus Robinson. And I thought, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. It's not like I haven't been wrong before. I'm the guy that said Alec Ogletree wasn't drafted in the first round. I can be wrong. And, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> but uh, he looked good. And then I thought he looked good in the first preseason game. And then everything kind of went south after that. Right. And, and, you know, to, to the Rams credit, no one released anything or leaked anything. I think people had their suspicions because he had the DUI in Dallas. Uh, I think I, I, you know, I, I think he's a Colt McCoy. Right. I think he's a guy that maybe when he gets his feet under him, he can start for you three or four games down the road. But I don't think he's any kind of long term answer. And, and at this point, I don't think he's a bridge. I think the Sam Harrell, the guy in uh, Seattle, is more opportunity to be a bridge. Obviously not Jimmy G. Uh, but, you know, if you're thinking about for the future, you know, you're going to, you know, the day Stafford hangs it up doesn't mean we're going to have the next John Elway in camp. Right. But the one thing I would like to say. Uh, is have the Rams become a destination, right? Have the Rams become a destination? Baker Mayfield's career is back, right? Uh, does Carson Wentz get his contract with the with the Chiefs if he doesn't show what he showed uh, with the Rams, right? Uh, and uh, and the Rams again, they they show they take care of their players, they do the right thing by their players. Uh, you know, uh, is this a destination so that when Stafford steps down, is there a free agent quarterback out there looming saying, you know what, I think I want to go to L.A.? And especially if McVay's still around, because that's an organization that that does some special things. And that's kind of cool, right? I'm just curious if that, do you think that could be in anyone's thinking down the road? But I hate to jump ahead of uh, and force Stafford into retirement too early. Um, Bill, are you watching the draft at home or the sports bar? Ooh, no, no, I never watch it at a sports bar. Uh, I'm not a sports bar guy. Um, and I know I'm going to offend people here, but I just can't, <clears throat> that's bad mojo, man. I can't do it. Uh, I'm in the Ram cave watching it. <clears throat> I've had <clears throat> my friends from mid Valley sports, the guys I grew up with that we worked together at mid Valley sports. I've had them here. You know, we haven't done it for a while. I think the last time we got together was 2015 because the Rams aren't usually drafting until the second day. 
So we haven't done anything like that. Uh, and then I, I just don't like, uh, I don't like all the buildup and the hype to the draft on, on, you know, I understand why the NFL does it. They own an entire weekend for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then the aftermath on Sunday, Monday, they own it by breaking it up into three days. But I really liked it when there was day one was the first three rounds and then they did everything else on Sunday. I didn't like, I don't like the, the red carpet treatment. I can't stand it. That's just me. But um, so, and then of course I've been fortunate Rams haven't had any first round picks, so no need for a party and I just won't go to a bar, but I watched the draft. Uh, my wife and I went to Vegas. We're not gamblers, but for people on our salary thing, sometimes you get your best deals are in Vegas and Vegas is a great place for food. So we had kind of like an eating vacation, her and I, uh, a couple of, a couple of Aprils ago after everything opened up. And I said, I'll go, but I want to watch the draft. And literally, I'm sitting in this super nice restaurant, Mateo's in the Venetian. And I got my phone and they got a TV screen up. My wife let us sit near the bar so I can watch I can watch the draft take place. So God bless my wife. So yeah, I do watch the draft, but I will not watch it uh, in a sports bar. It's bad mojo. Um, Willie Bowen, the terrific trio of Cronky, Sneed, and McVeigh. Yeah, right? Think about that. Before it was what, you know, I don't know, Georgia, Shaw, and what, Linehan? I mean, we're so fortunate, right? And and again, you know, we're getting Super Bowls out of this. We've been to two Super Bowls. And I don't want to speak ill of my time as a younger person growing up with the Rams, but there was a lot of heartbreak there, a lot of heartbreak. And McVay's just a superior coach to Chuck Knox, you know, rest in peace. But, uh, but Chuck Knox just – didn't have that ability that McVay has to get the Rams over the top because when there were these big games, it was few and far in between that you saw the Rams finish the run. They uh, they won in Dallas a couple times. Uh, you know, they, they won a couple of games, but they didn't win consistently those big games. That title run in 21 where, okay, you don't even horse around with the Cardinals. You kick their butt. Then you go to Tampa Bay. And just when it looks like everything's falling apart, you know, you get the for the love of the gameplay and the Rams win. Just when it looks like, oh, man, we're not going to get past Frisco. Guess what? Rams come back and win. And and you just didn't see that. And, and again, I go back growing up is that you look at it now and knowing what we know now and seeing them when you see them now is like, gosh, how are they? You know, and I love Don Klosterman. I loved uh, uh, Chuck Knox. And, well, you know, he didn't really want hated. He wanted Harris. But, you know, I love that team. but you're kidding yourself. You thought you were going to the Super Bowl with Pat Hayden. I, I just don't know what, you know, what purple drank were they drinking that made them think they were going to go to the Super Bowl with Pat Hayden. I, I just don't know. I, I do not know. All right, cool. Hey guys, uh, we have hit the, I think we've hit the 50 minute mark here. Oh, we're at 47 minutes. Okay. I'll stick around for about two more minutes. That's cool. And then uh, we'll get you guys out of here. Willie Bowen, I was heartbroken when the LA Rams lost to the Steelers. Uh, and the Patriots Super Bowls. Um, yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, how do you say that? That Super Bowl 14, it lives with me, right? I can, I can literally remember every emotion of every play that went through me that day. That was like one of those formative events in my eight, my youth. I was what 15. I wasn't quite 16. And uh, yeah, I can tell you exactly my reactions, my brother and I, as we looked at each other when things happened and, uh, and stuff and uh, we didn't, I, we did not know. We did not know. I don't remember Wadi being open when Lambert picked off the pass. I'm going to be honest about that. Didn't pick up on that one, but we did, um, you know, we could not understand why Stallworth was in single coverage with Lynn Swan got knocked out of the game uh, by Pat Thomas. We couldn't understand why Stallworth was in single coverage. Then when you see the replay it was Eddie Brown. You know, so that one hurt. That one hurt really bad because that was the capper. You wanted young blood. You wanted Reynolds. You wanted Elmendorf. You wanted, you know, these guys that you grew up with. I mean, Colin Bryant, Jim Youngblood, from the time I started watching the Rams in 73, they'd been there. So seven years there, they were you, they were part of your family almost. You wanted them to get that Super Bowl. So it hurt. The Super Bowl 36, I felt ripped off. Not with Spygate. I thought, I thought there was a helmet. Helmet to helmet hit on on uh, on Warner when he threw the pick six. Uh, I thought there were some cheesy calls there. Uh, you know that was just the bitter guy in me. Uh, unfortunately, I had to watch that one with a crowd. My church and I was the new pastor at the church had a Super Bowl party, 
And, uh, and I had to watch it with people who were just there for the commercials. And what people never knew at my church, because we'd always have a Super Bowl party, is they said, oh, we just have a Super Bowl party because Pastor Joe's a sports writer. And I, I, I told them, I said, you guys don't understand. I could watch this game alone by myself with a 13 inch black and white screen and I'd be just as happy. Uh, I do not like watching a game with riffraff and uh, you got to be into it. And so there we go. Uh, Billy Bowen, uh, Willie Bowen. I never lost faith in the Rams. Amen. Uh, uh, and yeah. Manuel Correa. Rod Perry was in mad coverage and stalwart uh, and stalwart and Eddie Brown blew it. Yeah. And it wasn't even a play action, dude. It wasn't even play action. He just froze. He just froze, right? And uh, if you want to get mad at George Allen, get mad at George Allen for making the deal to bring Eddie Brown. Um, and uh, and so, so yeah, that one was a killer because you saw he went inside. Stallworth um, went inside and, and Perry was expecting help. And, and with all that said, if Perry is 5'10 instead of 5'9 or 5'9 instead of 5'8, right? If his vertical is 34 and a half and not just 34 he tips that ball away right he tips it away ugh just a killer just a killer i do watch that um that nfl films version the half hour nfl films one and i do feel the emotions kind of come up but i will say this ah uh, we're at the 50 minute i can go all day on that one i will say this i didn't like the cut sh cutaway shots to the so called ram fans in the stands uh, those Ram fans, they look like those cheap Ram fans that would boo the team. Those people were all frauds. I'm sorry. I see those Ram fans at the Super Bowl, and I'm very judgmental about this. Uh, you know, they're crying and they're going, "Oh, our Rams! And come on, Ferragamo, you jerk!" And and it's like, you know, you're an idiot. I, I I didn't trust any of those people. The old woman that was getting all emotional and Gypsy Boots is out there. That was that LA character. I thought they were all frauds, unless one of you guys were in that video. I thought it was a. I thought when they go when they flash to the Ram fans in, in that Super Bowl 13 highlight film, that that was the epitome that showed how bad Ram fans were. And I, to this day, by and large, with the exception of very very few, the folks that watch us, I don't trust Ram fans, and I will not argue to say Ram fans are great fans. They're very vapid. They're very ephemeral. They're very temporary, and they do move on. But we press on. Okay, I'm going to answer these questions, then we're going to get going. Uh, the LA Rams did get their revenge on the Steelers on Monday Night Football the next year. You know, actually, they beat them in 78. I think it was in 78 the Rams beat them at the Coliseum. They beat them in 78 at the Coliseum, and they beat them in 75 on a Sunday night game, the Jaworski game at the Coliseum. And everyone was thinking the Steelers were going to blow the Rams out 42-7. to 7. I saw all the predictions. And my brother, with that, this is crazy. The Rams can play against the Steelers. And sure enough, right? Tipped pass here, one little thing here and there. Maybe Frank Corral hits an extra point or something. It's a little bit different ball game. Uh, Rams should have won Super Bowl 14. How different would history be? Maybe I should write a what if book if the Rams won Super Bowl 14. That would have been pretty cool. Manuel Correa, they lost, but that was my best time. Nothing beats the first time feeling. I will say that um, nothing was better than beating the Cowboys in Dallas with, with that Ram team that was a struggling team all year in 79, and then Ferragamo going to Wadi. And then, and then the beauty of all beauties, Bud Carson putting seven defensive backs in and Roger Stahlbeck's career ending flat on his butt uh, there in Irving. And that was his last game as a pro. And the Rams put him into retirement. So yes, that was, that was, uh, it was a great feeling. Uh, Manuel Correa, uh, no, I'm sorry, Willie Bowen, Jack and Jen Youngblood put Terry Bradshaw on the dirt. Man, you know, Youngblood. The young bloods, right? <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. What can you say? Who didn't love the young bloods, right? Uh, I think I got Jack's book around here somewhere. Get online. There's two Jack Youngblood books. Buy the first one. I think it's better than the second. Check that out. Um, Sid Gilliam. You mean Jefferson Street? Joe Gilliam was quarterback for the Steelers. Yeah, Gilliam played in that '75 game. He did. Uh, but yeah, that was Jefferson Street. Joe Gilliam, Tennessee State. That's a tragic story. Real tragic story. Okay, guys, I used all of your time. You got me talking about Super Bowl 14, and maybe I should do a book on it, but I could talk about that all day. You guys are the best, man. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for hanging with me and letting us talk football. And uh, and so have a great day. Uh, I think I'm going to pick up my game going into draft week. I think we might be on more than three times uh, during draft week is the buildup. 
Uh, I won't be live during the draft. I'm not going to interfere that way. But uh, but maybe after, you know, we're going to do a little bit more because the draft is a lot of fun. Please hit like, subscribe. Uh, you know, my my email is there. If you got a question you want to send me, uh, I don't think I put it in. I'll put it in right now. Um, you can check it out and send me your mock if you want to, uh, and uh, and stuff. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. And uh, we're going to get back on on Spotify. Just having some issues there. God bless. Take care. Hit like button. And any guys, time you guys want to talk Rams football, we're going to try to be here at five every day. Well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Take care, guys. God bless. Thank you, Manuel.